Ah, hello Reading Zone Book Club, I've been expecting you. My name is Sophie Wills and I'm the author of The Orphans of St Halibut's. The cover and all of the illustrations inside are done by David Tazziman. What's it about? Three orphans are living in an orphanage on top of a steep hill just outside a town called Sadsack and when their horrible matron, Miss Happy Day, dies at the start of the book, they decide to look after themselves and they keep it a secret from everyone down in the town. They buy food for themselves, they even buy a goat called Pamela. But then they find out that their orphanage is going to be inspected and if they don't pass the inspection, they'll all be sent to the sinister mending house where children go to be punished, never to be seen again. When I first wrote The Orphans of St Halibut's, I started with a picture in my head. I thought of a girl and her friends all alone in a big house on a hill trying to keep a secret from everyone in the town below. But I wasn't sure what was going to happen or even who else was going to be in it. So I just started writing and I made the characters get in each other's way a bit to see what happened. And actually that is one of my best writing tips. If you're having trouble thinking up a story make some interesting characters who either want different things or maybe they want the same thing but they have very different ideas on how to achieve it and just put them together and you will get conflict and conflict makes plot all by itself. But unfortunately writing the book wasn't quite that easy. I wrote a first draft but it was meandering all over the place and it didn't really have anything solid at the heart of it that would make the story hold together. So I looked at it and I thought well, first I thought, wow, this is really not very good. Um, and then I thought, what is the heart of the story? What's it really about? And I realised that it was about friendship and being the underdog, fighting against impossible odds, against awful people with very few skills of your own, finding out what your strengths are and working together to overcome those terrible odds. And then I was able to start again literally right from the beginning um, and that was okay because by doing that first draft I'd got to know my characters and I got to know the town and I knew what the driving force behind the story should be and how I wanted it to end. I just needed a decent plot to make it happen. So I had a bit of a brainstorm, I wrote down a few ideas, a few scenes that I reckoned would be good and I began again. So this time it was a lot better, it had a heart and a structure but there was a lot of waffle. There was far too much of people just sitting around talking, really. So then I had to get into the real nitty gritty of cutting boring bits, making it more exciting and actiony, improving the funny bits and most painfully cutting bits that I was really proud of and were, dare I say it, hilarious. But that I realised there was no real place for in the story. Now, if all that sounds like a lot of work, it is, I can't lie to you, I found it hard. But it was also fun. And it is actually a wonderful feeling to take a first draft and work at it to improve it. In fact, I like the rewriting and editing process even more than I like writing that first draft because I can feel it getting better. So if you're writing, whatever it is, I would encourage you not to feel bad if you read what you've first written and you don't like it very much. You can always make it better. At some point, you have to stop, but a first draft is usually just where you find out what the story is yourself. And the drafts after that are where you figure out how to tell that story to other people. I'm going to read from chapter six. Arthur, whose sad sax resident con man, has just surprised the orphans by turning up at St Halibut's just as they're frantically cleaning, ready for the inspection, and he's walked right in. Now Arthur cannot be trusted and Tig is desperate to make sure that he doesn't find out that they're home alone. Get out Arthur. That's not very nice Tig, you sound just like the matron. His sharp eyes focused on her. I haven't seen her around for a very long time now come to think of it. Lucky you, now go will you, we're not buying anything today, we're busy. She gave him another shove but it was like nudging a wall. So I gather. His lips formed a chummy smile. Funny thing is, 
I haven't seen hide nor hair of her for weeks, months in fact. Well, she's... I keep an eye out, see, so as not to bump into her when it's inconvenient. I watch the comings and goings. He walked his fingers up and down an imaginary hill. The hairs on the back of Tig's neck began to prickle. You've just missed her. His smile grew and he began to nod as though at some private joke. But I don't think you have, have you? Mister, I mean. You haven't missed Miss Happy Day at all, as far as I can tell. Don't blame you in the slightest. Tig's face was like stone. I don't know what you're talking about. I reckon you do. There was a standoff which felt like it lasted for hours but must only have lasted seconds in which the two of them faced each other inches apart, Arthur's nose barely higher than Tig's. Finally, she gave in. All right, tell me what you think, you hideous weasel. The insult slid straight over his greasy hair. I think she's done a runner, or dead, one of those, and he leaned in so close that she could see the tiny red veins and the whites of his eyes. Judging by the look on your face, I'd say it's the latter. Was it murder? There was an outraged gasp behind Tig as Herc appeared, picking up his drawings like a good boy. We wouldn't do that. It was an accident. Tig's eyes closed. It was a moment before she opened them again, because she couldn't bear to see the triumph on Arthur's loathsome mug. He knew, and she knew, that he now had something worth paying for. So now the orphans have yet another thing to worry about. All their plans seem to be unravelling at great speed. But unknown to them, things are about to get much, much worse. And you'll have to read the book to find out how.